again, that's just a little synopsis of our top 50 debit issuer uh, report that we do on an annual basis. Looking at other surveys, this is from the Pulse Debit Issuer Survey uh, 2010. Interestingly, what they found is that they saw an increase in the number in the number of issuers that offered a reward loyalty program increased slightly from 2008 to 2009 but uh, a, a, a larger decrease in the number of issuers considering launching a debit rewards program. So we can see the effect in 2009 of anticipated regulation, perhaps, of additional economic constraints, and even a, a decrease in consumer lending and consumer spend, where the economic model begins to get a little bit uh, unpredictable, and so we saw perhaps more issuers beginning to pull back on their strategies or taking more of a wait and see kind of attitude towards their programs. So what are some of the game-changing strategies when we think about reconstructing debit? Are there still game-changing strategies available? And I would argue, of course, there are always game-changing strategies available uh, when it comes to any of these kinds of products. And I'd like to talk about a few of these now. I I've grouped them together into these four categories affinity, savings, accessible programs, and real time. So let's look at affinity first. I think that um, the Delta MasterCard uh, debit card rewards program is really very, very interesting. It certainly has the hallmark of being a potential game changer in that it's the first time uh, a, an affinity program of this type is being tried in the market, uh, meaning that it's regionally focused. So um, while SunTrust is the initial issuer in their region, there will be other issuers that will um, use this. Certainly uh, tying it to a very well-known and well-respected travel brand is important. Travel rewards are really the, um, the mainstay of rewards markets. They're some of the most highly valued rewards. It also allows the issuer to appeal potentially to a higher transactor and one that is more more trans, um, uh, aspirationally focused. Um, so this has uh, the hallmarks of being a very interesting strategy as we go along. Uh, not just this strategy, but other co-branded types of programs. I think that the savings programs that uh, were typified by Bank of America's Keep the Change, these automatic cross-sell persistent value type of programs, um, have been extremely popular with consumers. Uh, Wachovia's Way to Save, um, there's, there's others that operate out in the market. Unfortunately, uh, these are very expensive programs to run since uh, cashback is the most expensive form of reward in that there is, there's no discount for a dollar. A dollar equals a dollar. Uh, but uh, these are uh, very, very popular programs, and um, we would expect that some of them will um, be maintained because of that, although perhaps who they're offered to might change. So there may be a difference in the way that these are offered, or there may be some fees uh, or other qualifications connected to them. These accessible programs, and by accessible I mean essentially low redemption thre threshold, so the opportunity to redeem faster. So I don't mean low value redemption as much as I mean the ability to redeem faster. And Citibank really brought that strategy uh, to the forefront with their thank you rewards where they really promoted the ability for consumers to redeem very quickly. These can have really strong relevancy to consumers, especially when we consider debit cards or everyday spend. The average ticket on a debit card is uh, still about under about $40. So it may take a while for consumers to accumulate rewards uh, sufficient enough for, say, a, a high-value uh, type of reward, but not for a gift card or other things that consumers really like getting as part of these rewards. Um, some of the accessibility can also be translated into location, and I think that um, that should not be discounted in uh, reward strategies. Um, there is a um, strong value proposition that can be offered to uh, small businesses and small merchants, and that connection, that financial institution can be seen as a value connector between the merchant and the consumer in a very real way by coupling reward offers, local reward offers, to their consumers. Uh, this is a very old practice, 
for those of you that have been in the market for a long time, it was a, an initial rewards practice, and certainly in the credit card industry, if you remember uh, statement inserts and bang tail envelopes, you'll remember these kinds of strategies, but they can be very... Uh, they can be perceived as very high value by consumers and things that they have they feel as if are accessible and also promote on a persistent way the value of, of, of financial institutions' brands. And that really takes us to real-time rewards, and I'm using Bling as a great example and their alliance with Fifth Third Bank. Um, real-time, I think, is going to become much more important in the market. I think it's an emerging uh, strategy offering real-time rewards. Uh, these, again, Bling's concept, original uh, go-to-market concept was very local, and it was encouraging that local contact. It also encourages everyday use. They're automatically redeemed, so they're very convenient. The consumer does not have to do anything um, to redeem these, these rewards. They're done directly at the point of sale, and there's that immediacy and real-time aspect of that, I think, are very important. We're going to be talking about this in more detail when we get into merchant-funded discount strategies. I think you'll see where that's really beginning to evolve. So are these game-changing strategies? I think each of these really are. Uh, which of these will, will survive in the years to come remains to be seen.